Over 400% growth in laundry pickup and delivery without a laundromat. Check out Claudia and Stephanie from We Wash Laundry Company. They put together this one minute video of the entire delivery process from beginning to end. Check it out. I want to welcome Claudia and Stephanie with We Wash Laundry Company. They've just absolutely hit it out of the ballpark. And they've been on a couple of previous episodes as well with over 10,000 views altogether in just about one year. Yeah. So pretty cool stuff. And their story is incredible. What makes them unique and really fascinating as well is they started their laundry service, their pickup and delivery laundry service without a laundromat. So this was live or die by their online presence, by their marketing, and they made it work. And not just work, they made it really work. And you'll see in the graphics, when you look at their total revenue, they went up 400% increase in one year, which basically means five times as much business, and then 700% growth in two years. So their numbers are astronomical. It was no accident. These ladies have a business plan and, and it worked. And we'll be getting to this a little bit later, but they're also providing guidance to people who are getting into the business. And so I'm really excited to hear about that as well. Considering where you are now, is this where you expected to be? Why you got into the business and, and basically where you're at now? Claudia is the yin to my yang. And we really do a great job of balancing each other because for me, I want more. I'm all yeah. about like, I'm the one pushing for more business and push, push, push. And she's the one that keeps me. like, let's slow down. Let's think about the processes. How can we best ease our way into it? And she's like, feet on the ground, it. we're running. <laughs> so it works. It works. I no, think having a great partner to balance, yeah, to balance everything out has really, really worked. We're about halfway where I'd like to be right. at this point because our machines are sitting empty, not running overnight. overnight. So there's a huge opportunity there that we haven't even crossed into. Just one of those we're tiptoeing because we know then that means managing that many more employees. That yeah. means taking that many more phone calls. So yeah, that's our next plan. That's our next step. We're just right now we're easing into it because you know we both have families you know that we both have three children yeah so. so trying to manage the homes the husbands and the business um it's funny you mentioned the nighttime shift because yeah. that is the entire reason my brother and i got into it was our, our dad said uh, we want these machines spinning at nighttime yeah. <laughs> and, and the only way we could accomplish that is if we brought laundry to the laundromat your fixed costs are the same you already have the machines and the marginal yeah. cost of one more wash is pennies <laughs> compared yeah. to buying and, and buying more equipment. You know, we don't have that luxury of other people feeding our machines when we're not there. Right. Like a laundry mat. So it's everything that you bring there. So yeah. 100%. Yes. We're only making mm -hmm. money if we're bringing laundry in. What did your operations look like when you started? And what does mm -hmm. it look like now? First, first started. Let's rewind a little bit. It's almost comical now yeah. to talk about. We talked about originally doing this out of my garage. Yeah which is really, really funny, but I've got a heated garage and we just like, you know what? We don't really have or want to invest the money because we're not sure if this is going to take off in our area because there's nothing like this in our area. And are people really going to send their laundry out to get done? And I really struggled with that at the beginning myself too now. Now it's like, please take it all. Hold on. I've got two socks that fell. Let me throw them in. Like, take it all. But anyhow, we thought about doing that at my garage and last minute, a great opportunity for a warehouse space came available and we jumped on it because we just thought, you know what? We're going to take our chances. If we're in, we're only out in a one year lease. So it wouldn't be terrible. 
Um, it was a great space with lots of potential for growth. It's in a commercial area though, so people can't find us. Like yeah. you're not gonna, it's not like normal retail space. So it is- Which is actually space. perfect because then you're yeah, paying yeah. lower rent because you're not paying for all the you know traffic, exactly. the foot traffic, yeah. which you don't really need. We don't need it. And the best thing about our specific place is it's very, very easily accessible to all the interstates. We're yeah. right off the highway. So it makes it very easy for our drivers to get on and off whichever way they're headed. It's really funny. I never would have thought this, but we have truck drivers yes. that Google laundry services, right? As they're passing we're right through. on that 85 oh, and wow. 30. Never heard of that market. Yes, yeah. that's great. And so here we are. They pull over in their big rigs <laughs> they do. and they bring up and their they park there. They park there and we are very, very nice. And when we get customers like the truck drivers, we do push their stuff ahead of everyone else's. Oh, yeah. that's terrific. Out yeah. there waiting in their trucks. Another opportunity we never thought would come. Yeah. But as far as where we started, warehouse space, we started with one little Pro Master City minivan, which we still own to this day. And then we started with three top low, just your residential uh, Speed Queen washers and Speed Queen dryers. There's nothing speedy about them, but they worked <laughs> You be careful. They worked for us. Be careful what they you worked say. for us. You know, but it, it was your typical residential washers and dryers where it took 58 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes for a load to wash and then an hour for them to dry. So we definitely started very, very small and then quickly learned that we needed to invest. And we only had two employees when we started. Yes. So that's a big thing too. And I think we mentioned in our first podcast with you that when we opened, we had so much laundry that we cried because it was like, <laughs> yeah. what are we going to do? We hate right. laundry. laundry haters. The OG <laughs> laundry haters are the ones doing all the laundry in these like slow machines. Yeah. And we've changed quite a bit. So what, what does your equipment mix look like today? We have got some commercial washers and commercial dryers, 40, uh, 40 pound all the way down to, we still have a couple of the top loaders and we hold on to them because you know what? You get customers laundry who you can tell the kids have been out rolling in the mud and they're sliding into first and third base. And so it really, really is nice to still have those old school top with an agitator in them. But other than that, we've pretty much upgraded to 40 pounders. And now we've got commercial dryers where we have to dry everything on low because they do dry um, so fast. So fast. That's great. <laughs> There's a I mean, big difference a between residential and commercial oh, equipment. 100%. And we added a van, a much bigger van, yes, which is like great. an Amazon van. And yeah. Well. And we went from two employees to 23. That is fantastic. The hardest part is getting started because then it's just you, you know, doing yeah. the wash and fold or maybe one person. And if that yeah. one person calls in sick or isn't able to show up, yeah. just a job to them, but it's your company that you invested so much yeah. in, you know, if one of your out of 20 doesn't show, you've got backup. Yeah. We're the last resort. I mean, <laughs> he's a great folder, but she hates it. But she's so good. <laughs> and I can launder really, yes, really well. She is very particular. But I am not the folding person. So they don't want me in there. One of my business school classes, the founder of Kinko's came in um, and and he goes, my secret to success is I can't do anything. So when somebody does something, <laughs> I say, well, you did a great job. Yeah. So just stand back and just relate the message. You know, yeah. we like to be on the outside looking in and just managing things that well, way. And now we're to the point where it's about business development. Yeah. So that's really where we need to be focusing on yeah. to move forward and to grow the business. We don't necessarily want to be in the day-to-day -day operations. We need to be continuing to grow. And that's a big part, operator versus business owner. Yeah. And it's neat seeing people make that transition. And it, it's hard to do because there's always a fire. Oh, I got to put it out. <laughs> But yes. you got to create a system so somebody else yeah. could deal with that and prevent the fire from happening in the first. So I want to get back to 2020. And so a lot of people who were in wash and fold delivery had tremendous growth, you know, just because of COVID. But your growth was even more spectacular than I'd say most. It basically went up 400%. And you were doing pretty well before. I know you wanted to grow from that point, but then it grew it was five times what it was in one year. Operationally, how did you deal with that type of growth? We always joke to you that we didn't really have a plan when we started this and that we certainly didn't have a lot of procedures in place. No. <laughs> and we made every mistake you possibly could. And it was terrible. Yeah. So guess what? We only have to make a mistake one time. And we learn to write down processes and procedures and we have it nailed down so well now. Right. And that's why it's just so smooth. And when you grow that fast, 
you have to have those policies and yep. procedures in place. Yeah. So we call it the we wash way and it works. Yeah. So we've got a really well oiled machine is like, is what we like. Yeah. To we say. have like a really serious training program. What's interesting yeah. is Mark Flaskamp at the Wash Dry Fold Conference, his whole presentation was on standard operating procedures yeah. because he scaled his business a lot too. And everybody in the audience was like, nobody was interested in creating the standard operating procedures, but everybody so, wanted them. <laughs> so yeah. is that and transferable? That, yes. It's definitely a model that we think anybody could do, even, if that, even laundromat owners. Yep. You know, and yes, they could make it to their own specifications for whatever, you know, they're... tweak what needs tweaked, but, you know, cause some like you guys, I know you guys have your folders, at least they did when we trained with them three years ago, yeah. that they, you would assign it from the beginning to, to the end, end, the pounds. So you would have them wash it, you know, sort it, wash it, uh, dry it, and then fold it. And so we do things a little yeah. differently at yeah. our location. So we have people that are actually experts in certain areas. So we have a sorter. That's designated just to sorting. Or, yep, just laundry. Yeah, and, and then we have our folders. folders. So we, you know, made it go in these sort of sections. Neat part too in our software is you're able to track who's putting it in the wash and sorting, who's yeah. doing the drying and who's doing the folding, and it'll actually tell you the number of pounds for each person because you know just like in your case, it, in your situation, it could be somebody different. So. Right. Yes. Yep. And it's been kind of fun because we've had. A few people reach out and actually came to our facility to yeah. learn from us and see what our procedures are and what our processes are. So, Especially if they're not owning a laundromat. The whole nice. thing that started this was running a wash and fold without owning a laundromat. You are now providing guidance or consulting for laundry owners? Yeah. Why not share it? We don't yeah. have direct competition yet. And we there no one's a threat to us. Um, so why not share our stories? Why not share the... This is what we did. Please don't do this. Okay, so we live in America, the American dream, right? You don't have to take huge loans yeah. to open a business. We yeah. both are huge Dave Ramsey fans. So we both yeah. went at it the Dave Ramsey way and we just went slow yeah. and just went and made sure that it worked. And You know what's it, interesting? We, we get so many uh, phone calls from people who are looking for laundromats and, and it becomes like five different things all have to come into place for a deal to happen. You have to make a deal yeah. with the laundry owner. You have to make a deal, make sure the lease is good with the landlord. You have to make sure the location is good. You know, you have to make sure equipment, you know, the loan, you've got so many different pieces and one piece doesn't make sense. You have to walk away from the deal. Otherwise yeah, you can't have crazy. a good deal with a bad lease or any yeah. one of those missing components or yeah. a great lease with a bad location. People have been waiting on the sidelines for years, like three years, five yeah. years. Oh, I'm waiting for the right deal. And so we just no, say, you know, what are you waiting for? Go pick up yeah. the laundry. We started profiting pretty early in the game uh, due to just business growth and us being out there and making people aware of We Wash Laundry Coat. Make sure to hit subscribe because in the next episode, we learn more from Stephanie and Claudia. You can also reach them directly for consultations at hello at We Wash Laundry Co. That's co.com. Curbside Laundries is the software platform that they built their successful business on. So if you'd like to learn more about the Curbside Laundries business and software solution, go to curbsidelaundries.com. We provide the software, website, and guidance to help you be successful.